think while I've got this opportunity, I'm going to do one more. It's not every day that you get to be in Saudi study and read his poetry out of uh, such an ancient book as this. I actually wish I had my own copy, which I do have, but it's in Perth. Uh, it's another one uh, called God's Judgment on a Wicked Bishop, or Bishop Haddo. And uh, I'm going to read this as uh, also uh, quite a light one. The summer and autumn had been so wet, but in winter the corn was growing yet. It was a piteous sight to see all around the grain was lying rotting on the ground. Every day the starving poor crowded around Bishop Haddo's door, for he had a plentiful last year's store. Yet all the neighbours could tell his granaries were furnished well. At last Bishop Haddo appointed a day to quiet the poor without delay. He bade them to his great barn repair, and they should have food for the winter there. Rejoiced such tidings good to hear, the poor folk flocked from far and near. The great barn was full as it could hold of women and children, and young and old. Then when he saw it could hold no more, Bishop Haddo, he made fast the door. And while for mercy on Christ they call, he set fire to the barn and burnt them all. I faith tis an excellent bonfire, quoth he, and the country is greatly obliged to me for ridding in these times forlorn of rats that only consume the corn. So then to his palace returned he, and he sat down to supper merrily, and he slept that night like an innocent man, but Bishop Haddo never slept again. In the morning as he entered the hall, where his picture hung against the wall, a sweat like death all over him came, for the rats had eaten it out of the frame. As he looked there came a man from his farm, he had a countenance white with alarm. My lord, I opened your granny this morn, and the rats had eaten all your corn. Another came running presently, and he was pale as could be. Fly, my lord, fly, quoth he. Ten thousand rats are coming this way. The lord forgive you for yesterday. I'll go to my tower on the Rhine, he replied. Tis the safest place in Germany. T till... I'll go to my tower on the Rhine, replied he. This is the safest place in Germany. The walls are high and the shores are steep, and the stream is strong and the water deep. Bishop Haddo fearfully hastened away, and he crossed the Rhine without delay, and reached his tower and barred with care all the windows, doors, and loopholes there. He laid down and closed his eyes, but soon a scream made him arise. He started and saw two eyes flame on his pillows from whence the screaming came. He listened and looked. It was only the cat. But the bishop, he grew more fearful for that, for she sat screaming, made with, mad with fear, at the army of rats that was drawing near. For they have swum over the river so deep, and they have climbed the shores so steep, and up the tower their way is bent to do the work for which they were sent. They are not to be told by the two, by the dozen or score. By thousands they come, and by myriads and more. Such numbers they have never been heard of before. Such a judgment had never been witnessed of yore. Down on his knees the bishop fell, and faster and faster his beads did he tell. As louder and louder, drawing near, the gnawing of their teeth he could hear. And in, and in at the windows, and in at the doors, and through the walls, helter-skelter they pour, and down from the ceiling, and up through the floor, and from the right and the left, from behind and before, from within and without, and above and below, and all at once to the bishop they go. And they have wetted their teeth against the stones, and now they pick the bishop's bones, they gnawed the flesh from every limb, for they were sent to do judgment on him.